Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today's tutorial, we are making these little rear view mirror hanging pumpkins. <laughs> I thought these were cute for fall and Halloween. Um, and they're just hanging on my rear view mirror. Now one of them is a little bit bigger. This one I chained uh, 16 and this one I chained 19. So it's a little bigger and I, I stuffed this one really, really full. Now this one I didn't. This one's a little squishier and this one's a little firmer. So you guys can do whatever size you want. Let's talk about what we're gonna need. Okay, so first of all, I could not find a orange, um, where's the, oh no, my label's not here. I, oh yeah, it is right here. And I could not find a size three orange, like a pumpkin orange, could not find it anywhere. So what I did is I bought a size 10. This is an Aunt Lydia's crochet thread size 10. Now I bought one of these and then I opened it and I pulled a bunch off and I put it in a little tote here on the side. And what I did was I just doubled up on the size, on the size 10 and that got me close to a size three. So that's what I did. If you guys can find a size three, um, in a pumpkin orange, oh, I forgot to tell you, this is actually the color pumpkin in the size 10. If you can find a size three, I absolutely go for it. Um, I couldn't find one. And then I, you're, you are going to need a size or I mean, a, a brown number three. I got my label right here. It's a number three in the color coffee. And then I found this really pretty green I found it on Amazon and this is literally all it is, all it says on Amazon and then you just pick the color, but I'll put a link in the description box to the, to this one. It's this really pretty green. It doesn't have a name. It literally just says colored bird cotton two, uh, two millimeter number three, 220 yards. Um, I'll put a link in the description box for this actual one that I got. Okay. So you're going to need that thread. And then you're going to need a 2.25 millimeter hook, scissors, you're going to need a tape measure, and then you're going to need two, oh, I can pick them up, two needles. We're going to need one that's a little bit longer and then one just, you know, a normal size that you would use for crochet thread. Um, this one is because we are going to actually be working through the pumpkin. We're going to go straight through the pumpkin and we need that length even on the big one too to get through our pumpkin. Um, and then this one is just to pretty much just weave in our ends, but we're going to need a longer one and then just an average one. And then I personally need these, not a lot of other people do, but I personally do, is a pair of needle nose pliers. And the only time I used that was when I finished attaching our little hanger here um, to hide my tails. I pulled it through, pulled my long needle through everything, and then getting that the eye of the needle plus my tails through. I need just a little extra grip, so I just grabbed this with my needle, my needle nose pliers and pulled it right through. You may not need them. I usually need them whenever I'm working with crochet thread. All right, especially number three. Um, oh, and a stitch marker. And then you're gonna need about a handful of some polyfill. Oh, you will not need that much at all. <laughs> That's just what I pulled out of the bag. <laughs> but you're gonna need some polyfill, okay? Um, and that's it. And then you get, after all this work, you get a cute little, cute little pumpkin to hang from your rear view mirror. Like I said, this is a chain of 19 and this is a chain of 16. And that's the size difference. So like, this one sets at its widest point, about two and a quarter inches. 
and then the little one at its widest point about one and three quarter inch uh oh I have a little tail right there that didn't get weaved in must have got stuck on the stem see it <laughs> oops I don't know what that's from well I'll have to fix that right now but so like I said if you guys can find a number three orange um that's close to a pumpkin color I mean obviously it doesn't have to actually be that bright of an orange it'll that'll work I just, I could not find one anywhere. I looked everywhere to find an orange number three crochet thread and I could not find it. So I just thought, you know what? I'm just going to double up two uh, strands of size 10 and go from there. And then, um, so the place that I bought this, this really pretty green from off Amazon. There, I fixed that. They have an orange, but it was like $14, and I thought, oh, no, <laughs> I'm not spending $14 on a skein of cotton yarn. Not happening. But the um, this is absolutely not that expensive. Holy cow, no. <laughs> All right, now I'm ready, guys. Let's get our stuff together, and let's get started. Okay, to get started, we're going to take our thread... I about said string. <laughs> we're going to take our thread and we're going to start with a slip knot, but we're going to get a long tail. So we want a tail about that long. That's about 10 inches, I'd say. It doesn't have to be 10 inches, but just long enough because that's what we're going to use to sew up the side of the pumpkin. All right, so get your slip knot on your hook. And now we're going to chain 19. One two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so there is my chain of 19. And what we're going to do is we're going to single crochet into the second chain from our hook. So not that one, but this one. Single crochet in there, making sure you're getting both strands if you're using the two strands of size 10. And we're just going to single crochet into each chain all the way down okay so go ahead and single crochet all the way down your chain and I'll meet you in the last chain okay I have the very last chain I still need to work into and if your piece uh, wants to coil up or curl up like that don't worry about it it'll come out of it so this last chain is a little tight for me because I worked it a little tighter there we go all right so that is the end of row one now row two and what we're gonna repeat for the entire pumpkin chain one and turn is we are gonna back loop single crochet into each single all the way across get me some slack So we're going to go right into that back loop back and you're going to have two on your hook because the two strands if you use the two strands and we're going to work that into each chain i'm sorry chain into each single crochet all the way down our uh, piece back loop single crochet I'm trying to do this, to, I'm trying to hold it so where you can see what I'm doing. So there's my next, next single crochet. I'm going to go right through. I don't know where that shadow is coming from. Okay, so I moved my camera and I think you can see better now. I'm going to go right are you serious focus on me I'm gonna go right through the two side loops the two back loops I mean okay 
Hej. So you can see my next stitch is right there. So I'm going to go right into the two back loops. And I'm saying two because there's two loops since I'm using two strands. And then just keep going back loop all the way to the end and I'll meet you guys at the end. Okay, I'm coming to the end. I have one more to work into and it's kind of uh, turned a little bit, but it's right there. Right there's my two loops and that's my last single and we should have 18. So that very first one is a little uh, sideways right there, but that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna repeat row two, chain one and turn, and back loop single crochet all the way across and we're going to repeat that and repeat that and repeat that for 47 times and our piece should measure six inches or just a tad bit over six inches because I think mine Yeah, mine's just a touch over six inches. See right there? So once you are on the, uh, so you're gonna repeat row, row two 47 times for a total of 49 rows, okay? And then uh, to finish off, I've got a couple more I need to work into. There's my last one. So I'm going to chain one, pull up a long loop, and then I'm going to cut. All right. And there is the main portion of our pumpkin. So now what we're going to do is we're going to sew the two ends together. So whichever tail you want to use, it doesn't matter which, we are going to weave on now that we don't need the longer needle right now, we can use the smaller one. Um, I can find them. Okay, I found my needle. And um, I wanted to say by smaller, I meant shorter, the shorter needle of the two. I'm gonna put these together. And all I'm gonna do is just go in and out some uh, the so what I'm working through are the top of the single crochets and then the remaining loops from the beginning chain and I'm gonna oops get that tail out of there I'm gonna go in this way and I'm gonna come back and catch the next loops of the tail or the remaining chain and the next two loops now I'm not like I'm not sticking to any certain way of doing it if I get all the loops of the single crochets, that's fine. If not, no big deal. It doesn't matter. I'm just weaving them in and out. Nothing fancy. And I may miss some loops of the chain. That's fine. Coming to the end. Oh, lost my. <laughs> well, come on now. There. Come. 
coming to the end and I want to make sure I get that corner so I'm going to just gonna go through both loop, both sides I mean okay now I'm going to weave that through some single crochets uh, I may need to go to this side I don't need it to be extremely well weaved in because what we're getting ready to do is flip it inside out. Dang it! I just... There. I'm going to go back through just a few of them. Okay. Now I'm going to snip that. All right, now we're going to turn it inside out. So that seems kind of somewhat hidden, but it's not perfect. So that's fine. Okay, now what we're going to do is that same concept. But we are going to go, and I am actually going to get a stitch marker. And I'm just going to mark where the beginning is. So I know when I get to my stitch marker, the beginning is right around here. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go in and out, in and out, wherever I can go. Like I'm not um, strategically going in certain areas. I'm just going where I can come in and where I can come out without any resistance from the thread. I am trying to keep it as close to the edge as I can without going, you know, way down here. And I can, I'm at my stitch marker. So I know I could probably go in and out one more time. All right, now I'm going to tighten this up. And I'm going to bring it right up through the middle. Okay, I'm going to pull that tight. As tight as I can. And then I'm going to take my needle and I'm just going to run it back and forth across to pull that tight. And it'll, the more I do it, the more it's going to pull it shut. I'm just going to go where my needle will go in. Now I'm going to go because you can kind of see the two little holes it's leaving where it it's can't fully close. I'm just going to go straight across. Pull. There. That's closing it up. I'm going to come through here one more time. Just to make sure it's nice and closed. Okay. So there's the bottom of our pumpkin. It's not pretty, but 
gets the job done. <laughs> All right, so now we're going to get our polyfill. Okay, so I've gotten me a little bit of polyfill here, and I'm going to stuff a little bit. Try to get this to where it's what I'm doing is kind of rolling it in on itself so it try it stays more together I guess I can say well I'm gonna sew the top shut because we're gonna do the same thing that we did we're gonna weave the rest of our tail and I'm just gonna mark where I start so I know again this is where I started so I'm gonna come out wherever it'll let me and then I'm going to start weaving in and out just like before and what I'm doing with this finger is holding the polyfill down because I don't want to catch a bunch of polyfill in my needle and then when I pull my needle tight all that polyfill is going to come out like you can kind of see you see that it kind of did right here anyway so I'm just going to keep weaving this in and out. Every time I say in and out, it's reminding me of a song. I think it's like from the 70s. I don't know. I don't want to sing it because I don't want to get in trouble. But I think it's, um, I can speak it. It's a... Uh, Oh, I can't even, like, <laughs> I can't even get the words in my head. I, I don't know. Anyway, every time I say that, this song pops in my head. Like, it plays all night. Uh, Mama never something and Daddy never sleeps at night. I can't, oh, I can't remember the words exactly, but it's something to, like that. Okay. So I'm coming back where I started that was kind of low get up there all right I can go a few more times in and out I just ran that right under my thumbnail. That hurt. Okay, so now before we close this up, we are going to stuff this little pumpkin as much as we can. We want a fat little pumpkin. Plump pumpkins. <laughs> Now we can pull, and we can see, we can stuff it a little bit more. I think I can get a little more in there. I am packing this in there. Okay, I don't think I can get any more in there. Maybe a tiny, tiny bit. Pull this as tight as I can and then I am going to start just sewing well I'll try to get as much as that polyfill down as I can now I'm just going to start sewing sewing it up just like we did at the beginning I think I might need 
a sharper needle just to get through the fibers, but I think I can do it. Stay shut. And it's okay what this top looks like. I mean, I'm not going for perfection. I never do in any of my work. There's no such thing. And uh, because our little stem and our leaf and our little curly cue thingy is going to be in the top. Just keep sewing it shut. Some of my polyfill is coming out. I just ran that under my fingernail again. Oh, dang it. Crap. That's okay. I can fix it. All I'm going to do, if that happens to you, pull that out a little. Find your tail right there and right there. And all I'm going to do is just tie that on to my ends that snapped. Now, of course, the knot is going to be a bit of a problem coming through everything, but that's okay. Things happen, and then you just adapt. All right, so now I'm just going to tuck those tails in there. Now that's forever going to be my weak spot. So I may just need to take a little stuffing out of here. All right, I'm going to go ahead and get back to where I was. So I'm going to have to weave all this in and out real quick. And like I said, that knot is going to forever be the little weak spot right there. So now I can't pull near as hard as I was. Like that. Okay, I'm going to have to fix this off camera real quick. I'll be right back. Okay, I think I got it knotted pretty good this time. All right. Start that over, get my tails back in there. Sorry guys. Weave this in and out again. Is this real life? <laughs> I mess up just like everybody else. Remember I said that knot isn't gonna wanna pull through there. So I may have to weave this around again, in and out again. So if this happens to you guys, I you just do the same thing I'm doing. Now, since I had that knot, um, I can't cinch it closed past that so that's why i'm weaving it back in and out it's working look how plump that little pumpkin is pumpkins are one of my favorite fall and halloween decorations but believe it or not i i do not like pumpkin pie I haven't since I was a kid. I don't know what it is about it. I'm just not a fan of pumpkin pie. Really not a fan of any pie, to be 100% honest. Okay, it's getting a little tighter. Okay, so now I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and start sewing across the hole to close it up better. This 
just like that. And remember what I said, the top right here kind of is not a big deal with how it looks because that is going to be um, where our stem and everything is. Our little curly cue and our leaf. Okay, so I'm going to call that good. Now I'm going to run the needle right through the center, out the bottom. I'm going to pull it tight. Come back up. Come out the center. Pull it tight again. One more time. Pull it tight. And then pull it real tight. And then when I cut, it's going to pop back inside of the pumpkin and then you can't see it. Okay. So there is our little pumpkin base. Now you can uh, roll it around and trying to get that polyfill to lay nice and pretty. So there is the base of our pumpkin. Now we're going to make the leaves. So now... We're done with our polyfill, so we can put that to the side. And for our leaves, we are going to get our green thread. Same hook. get my chicken scratch out so I can see what <laughs> I did. All right, so we are going to take our green thread, same size hook, get a slip knot. An average size tail is good. We don't need a, you know, a super long one. Get that on our hook and we're going to chain 5. So 1 2 3 4 Five. I lied to you. I'm sorry. Chain six, not five. Chain six. And we're going to slip stitch to our first. We're going to chain one. Tighten that single, or I mean that slip stitch down. Now we're going to work a single crochet. And I'm going to mark that. Of course, it's the same color stitch marker. <laughs> okay, so we're going to work a single. Now we're going to work a half double. Now we're going to work an extended half double, which is a yarn over. Go in, pull up a loop. Now instead of yarning over and pull through all three, we're just going to yarn over and pull through one. Then we're going to pull through all three. All that does is just give us a tad bit more height than a half double, but not as much as a double. Okay, so we worked the extended. Now we're going to work two doubles. One and two. Now we're going to work one treble. Yarn over twice. through two, pull through two. Now we're going to chain one, work another treble. So basically now what we're doing is working everything we just worked backwards. So we worked the treble. Now we're going to work two doubles. One, 
and two. Try to scooch everything over. Now we're going to work the extended half double. Yarn over, pull through one. Now we yarn over and pull through all three. Now we're going to work a half double. Now we're going to work a single. And now we're going to slip stitch into the ring. Just, oop, didn't mean to do that. Go right in our ring and with a slip stitch. Come on now, there we go. All right, and there is our little leaf. But we're going to make a little stem. So we're going to chain six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Slip stitch to the third chain from our hook. So there's the first, there's the second, there's the third. We're going to slip stitch right into that. Thread split. All right, now we're going to slip stitch into the next. Slip stitch into the next. Slip stitch into the next. And now what we're going to do is slip stitch into the very first single crochet that we have marked. Chain one, pull up a loop, and cut. Now we can tighten that middle tail just a little. And there is our leaf. So go ahead and make another one, unless you only want one. I'm going to put two on mine. So if you want another one, go ahead and uh, pause this video or, or rewind it and make your other leaf and then come back. And we got a few more things to do and then we'll be done. Okay, so I got my second leaf made. My two little leaves. I'm going to set them to the side because now we're going to work on the stem. Now the stem, I do recommend doing the magic circle and I am going to walk you guys right through that. Um, however, you can do like a chain, uh, chain four slip stitch to the first chain and then um, work eight single crochet into that ring. But this makes it a lot cleaner looking and makes a nice flat top and then a smooth bottom or sides, I should say. But what we're going to do is we're going to take our thread and I'm going to set my hand here. I don't know what that, there must be a plane going over or something. And I'm going to set my hand here and I'm going to come around and then I'm going to separate my fingers, but I'm going to keep these two together. And I'm going to come from my pointer finger down come up, but I'm going to only go around these two. Come around again. I don't have enough, so I'm going to have to tug on that a little. Come around again. Come back. Set that on my pinky. Now I'm going to take my working yarn here. I'm going to bring it up my finger, and now I'm going to set that right on top of my uh, thread that's on my pinky, and I'm going to hold it with my thumb. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to straighten up these two loops that are on my fingers. Just so they're kind of together and they're not looped, they're not wrapped over each other. And I'm going to come through here. And I'm going to grab that strand that's on the back of my hand. Pull it through. And then I'm going to chain one. This is kind of hard to do where... And then chain one. And that locks our circle. Or magic circle, magic ring, whatever you call it. 
I'm gonna do that one more time with you guys so you can see it. So to, just to make sure everybody's got a good understanding, okay? So I'm gonna set my thread down. I'm gonna bring my hand around to the front of it. Come around. So it's coming from behind my hand over the my pointer finger. And then I'm gonna separate my fingers keeping these two, my middle and my ring finger together, and I'm gonna wrap around those twice. And you're gonna to have to pull it to make sure you get enough tail twice. Come from the bottom and I'm gonna set that right on my pinky. And then I'm gonna take my working yarn here and bring that to the top of my pointer finger and set that right on top of the strand over my pinky and hold it. Now, I'm straightening these up, okay, and I'm going to come from underneath, grab that yarn or that thread, and chain one, and I'm going to hold it and let go, and there's my magic ring, okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to work eight single crochet into that ring, so one, and I'm gonna stop and mark that. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Now I'm gonna pull that loop up just so I don't lose that stitch. Now I'm going to remove my stitch marker. Nah, I'm gonna leave it, just leave that. Okay, so when we're looking at, all right, so when we took it off our fingers, it looks like this, okay? So turn it upside down to where your single crochets are upside down and hold on to them. And now look at this end. Do you notice how our tail is here and then one of the loops comes out right at that exact same spot that tail does. There, you can see it when the light hit it, right there. And then this loop comes out uh, to the side of it, like it's closer to our stitch marker. What we're going to do is we're going to pull this tail, holding on to our work, pull this tail. And that is what's going to close our work to make a circle. So pull it tight, let go of it. Pick up your tail and pull your tail, oop, <laughs> pulled it right out of my hand. Pull your tail tight and that, sorry, I'm gonna get this all, that's what closes everything up nice and tight. See, like right here's our tail. You can see it closed it up. And there is your magic circle, your magic ring. All right, now what we're gonna do is we are gonna work a back loop single crochet all the way around. So I'm gonna remove my stitch marker and I'm gonna go right in there with a back loop single crochet. Get that back loop, work a single, I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna mark it so I don't lose track of where I was. And to the next, into the next into the next into each one one more Okay, so now what that's doing is that's creating the um, magic ring that we did is a flat top. And now that we worked in the back loops, it's going to start working down. You can see that. So that was round one.
All right, so we're gonna do a few more rounds. I'm gonna single, now we don't work in the back loop anymore because now our angle or our turn has been made. So now we're just gonna single crochet in each one. So here is the first. So I'm gonna stop and mark that. One, two, three, Alright, there's four. There is five. Right there. There's six. Seven. and eight. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna keep single crocheting around. So that was, let's see, round one was the eight single crochet into the magic ring. Round two was the back loop, single crochet all the way around. And round three was single crochet all the way around. So I'm going to repeat round three a few more times and I'm going to come back and tell you guys how many times I repeat it. And I'm basically all I'm going to do is work a few rounds, set it on the pumpkin. Do I like the way it looks? Yes or no? And you know, go from there. So I will be right back and let you guys know how many rounds, uh, repeats of round three I did. Okay. Okay. So I worked round four, five, six, and seven, just single crocheting around. So now I'm going to remove that stitch marker and then I'm just going to slip stitch to the first one. Chain one, pull up a loop and fasten off. Okay. So for your guys' stem, if you like the way it looks, I mean, seven round, uh, Three was the first round, just single crocheting. Then round four, five, six, and seven, I just single crocheted around, okay? So there is our stem. We're almost done. Let's set that to the side. And now we're going to make the little curly cue. So again, with the brown, I'm going to work a slip knot. Get this on my hook. We are going to chain 16. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. All right, we're going to single crochet in the second chain from the hook. And then we're just going to single crochet into each chain all the way across. And I am working them a little bit tighter because I want them, I want this to curl up. So go ahead and single crochet into each of your chains and I will meet you at the end. Okay, I've got one more that I need to single crochet into. Chain one and pull up a loop. Cut, and there is our little curly cue, which I'm, I'm gonna make mine curl a little bit better. We'll worry about that after we get it on the pumpkin. Okay, so now we're ready to assemble everything. So I'm gonna get my leaves. And my stem let we're gonna start with our stem so now we're gonna break out that long needle and I'm gonna get that loaded on my thread and I'm just gonna go straight in straight through the pumpkin come out the middle 
make sure you're going in the top because I just realized, um, or I'm, I'm sorry, go in the bottom of your pumpkin out the top. No. <sighs> go in the top of your pumpkin, come out the bottom. I couldn't get it right for a minute. <laughs> All right, so now we're gonna position that stem to where it sits right in the middle of our pumpkin. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to cut, go in right back in that same spot I came out of. And what that's doing is, um, yes, we are gonna run it in and out the same spot that we came in, but it's gonna catch all that fiber uh, polyfill on the inside and keep it from pulling right back out. So I'm gonna come up and I'm gonna make sure I catch a side of, not that much, but catch the side of the stem. Come through. Okay. Still make sure this you want, or you got the stems. I can't speak today, guys. I am sorry. I don't know what my deal is. But make sure the stem is setting where you want it. Go back in a loop at the bottom and then come out and then come out somewhere on the bottom. It doesn't matter where as long as we can come right back into it. Go right back in the same spot the best you can and then come up and we're going to grab another side of the stem. And notice how the more we keep pulling on that, see how it's squishing the center of the pumpkin? That's what we want. And then I'm going to actually bend my stem over like that. But anyway, so I'm going to keep doing this all around. I'm going to catch a piece of that stem. I'm going to come out. Now, it doesn't matter where you come out. Just remember, as long as you can go back in it. Don't go through the stitches. Go through a hole between. Pull that tight. Now, I'm going to go right back in there. Catch another side of the stem. Okay, so the stem is on there. So I'm going to pull it tight, I'm going to go right back through, come out the middle, uh oh, I caught my, get off there, there, pull that tight, and then we are going to snip, and we got to pull it tight, and well, it's supposed to go back inside the pumpkin, but that's all right. If it doesn't, I can't pull it tight enough. Just put your hook in there and grab it and pull it and it'll hide that tail. Okay, so there is our stem. All right, so let's work on our leaves. All right, so I want my leaves to set right here on the side. I want one about like there and then I'm actually going to set the other one on top of it kind of like this like that so I'm going to take my middle tail here oops drop my needle load that on And we're going to follow the same concept with going in and out the same air, same spot with sewing our tail on. I'm going to make sure that the stem of my leaf comes around the stem of the pumpkin. But I'm going to go... I'm, what I'm doing is holding it where I want it. So the stem is coming around the stem of the pumpkin. And I'm just going to lift that up a little bit and just go right in there. Now make sure you're coming out between stitches not through your thread so right like that 
See how it came through between the threads and the stitches and knot between the threads? And then I'm going to go right back in there. And I'm going to come up and I'm going to catch a side of my leaf. And then when I pull it, see how the thread goes back in there and you can't see it? That's what we want. I'm going to go one more time. And come out. Right like that. And now I'm going to do the same thing with my other tail here. I'm just going to go into the stem, come out. Right there. Okay, so I am actually going to call it good on that leaf. Because this isn't a toy, this is just a hang from the rearview mirror. But if you are doing a toy, I would definitely suggest to do it a little better than that. Or, you can glue it. Like, I may end up adding a little polyfill. Okay, see how that green is still sticking in, sitting there? I'm going to go through my stitches and just turn. So basically what I did was I put my needle in, I inserted it into the pumpkin, and then came up and then twisted like that. And what that does is catch that other tail. So I'm going to go in and turn. Ouch. There. So there's my first leaf. Now I'm going to set my second leaf. Let's see. I think I might I think I might go like this. So I'm just going to set it right like that. All right, now I'm just going to load up one of my tails. It's going to catch a stitch right there. Come out between. Go right back in the same spot. Catch another stitch. Go back in. Just like that. And now I'm going to do the tail. Or, I should say the stem, sorry. Make sure the leaf is set in the way I want it to. Which, I mean, it honestly really doesn't matter how the leaf is set in. I'm just going to go in, come out between some stitches. Okay. We'll call that good. Like I said, if this isn't a toy, so it's just going to be hanging from my rearview mirror. Now I'm going to pull that tight. Snip it. That wasn't supposed to happen. That's okay. Pull that tight and snip. And then I'm going to take my needle and just grab onto that tail to hide that. Okay. We're almost done. Now all we gotta do is add our little curly cue to this side over here. I'm gonna add a power probably about right there. <laughs> it's so cute. Alright, so now I'm actually gonna load two of these, or I mean both of these tails onto my needle here, if I can. Let's see if I'm that good. Oh, I did it. <laughs> I did not expect that to happen. <laughs> All right. 
So now I am going to just set it here and I'm going to position it how I want. So basically right now what I'm doing is I'm looking and I'm and I'm thinking, where do I want the front of my pumpkin to be? And I like that. So I am just going to go straight into the base of that stem or maybe go over a little bit. That might've been too much. And I'm going to come out the bottom. And I'm just going to leave it right like that. I'm gonna pull it tight. And snip. And then I'm going to go in there and catch those tails the best I can. Or I just may just shove them in there. And there we go. So our pumpkin is done. Now at this point you guys can squish on it and get it shaped the way you'd like but I am actually going to take a little bit of fabric tack just to secure everything down like my leaf stems and all that so I'm just gonna put just a drop slowly coming down <laughs> okay so I'm just gonna put just a little dollop in there and then I'm gonna put a little dollop under here just to hold that I'm not gonna glue this down I'm just gonna let that hang so I'm going to set that to the side and we're going to let that dry. And now what we're going to do is add the strand that's going to hang from our rear view mirror. Now, if you guys know exactly how long you want this, um, go, you know, like go measure how, you know, long, much is going to hang from your rear view mirror. I'm not too particular. I think I'm going to pull out about let me see. I'm going to pull out let's see. Cuz I want it to hang about midway down from my rearview mirror to my dash and I think that's about a foot. So I'm going to pull out about a foot. So from here to here, and then I'm going to do it, I'm going to double it. Oops, I just pulled too much. So I just laid it over on top of itself, to right there. So there, this is how far mine is going to hang. Now I realize, you know, everybody's is different, like everybody's dash is different. But my dash isn't very far away from my rearview mirror. So if you guys want to measure yours or just kind of wing it, <laughs> however you want to go about it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to load one end on my needle. Put that on there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come just about the same way we did our little curly cue. I'm going to come to the center of the pumpkin as much as I can. And then I'm just going to come out straight at the bottom. Oh, pull it off. So I'm just going to go right in there. No, I want it more in the center. Right about there. That's good. Now I'm going to pull that through. About, I'm going to leave it like that. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to load the other tail, the other end, load that on. Now I'm going to try to go relatively the same place, in and out. Where am I at? That's good enough. Can you see where my needle's coming out? Right there. There. Okay, so basically what I want is enough 
on each end, I want them to be the same length. So obviously one of these needs to be pulled. There we go. And I'm just going to tie these in a little bitty knot. Just in the tiny, tiny little knot. Okay, now I'm gonna pull it tight. Now, if you can, it's not a big deal, but if you can, so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna load my, or shove my needle through my pumpkin a little bit first. Since I got my long needle, I'm gonna come out right between the stitches, don't come through, pull it down. And now I'm going to take that tail, well, I'm going to do both of them, and I'm going to load it onto my needle best that I can. There's one. And there's two. Now I'm just going to pull them through. best I can. I may need to get my needle nose pliers out. Okay, so I pulled it out with my needle nose pliers. Now I'm just going to snip that off. Take my needle and go in there, catch them and hide them. And there we go. <laughs> There's our little rear view mirror pumpkins or pumpkin. Ta da! I hope you guys enjoyed. <laughs> I think it's adorable. Thank you guys so very much for watching. You guys are the greatest, as always. You know you are. <laughs> uh, subscribe if you haven't. Hit that thumbs up. Leave me a comment. And check out my description box. I got links to my Facebook group, my Instagram, my. Twitter and all kinds of stuff. Um, so as always, thank you guys so very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.